Hi, everybody, and welcome to Six Months Later, the podcast 180 Days in the Making, where we talk to interesting people about their lives and their hopes for the future. And then we check in with them in six months to see if they still have hope. And <laughs> my name is Matthew Shadorn. I am joined, as always, by my co host, Tara Newton Wordsworth. Hello. Hello, Tara. How are you doing today? Why, I'm doing just fine. Thank you, Matthew. How are you doing tonight? I am all right. It's uh, December 28th, just past. Christmas. How was your Christmas? Hey, it was pretty good. Better than yours, given that you have a band-aid on your face and it looks like someone punched you in a fight. That's not what happened at all. I told you I cut myself shaving and we're not going to talk about it anymore. Hey, listen, if you, uh, you can just wink if something actually happened. I don't want to have one of those situations where you're like, I fell. I I hit myself on a table. That's all that happened. (laughs) Yes. I also got this black eye from shaving. (laughs) No, I I just, I cut myself shaving. I don't, I don't, yeah. I, you'd think I'd gotten good at it at this point because I've been doing it for 25 years. Jesus. Yeah. And I am still not great at it. I can't believe you started shaving when you're only three years old. (laughs) Yes. That's exactly what happened. But yeah. So my Christmas was fine. It was just Alice and me, but we've been having a nice, lazy time uh, just in the house. So I honestly don't know how we would have coped with having family here because we're taking lots of naps, just kind of not really relaxing, but being very, very lazy. So Sounds ideal to me. Yeah, our Christmas was nice. It was, you know, just, I would say just the mass consumption of food, basically. Like Mm -hmm. I put on four pounds in a day. I don't even know how that's possible, but you know, it felt good. I, I, oh, my Christmas pudding was amazing. Like, I don't want to obviously talk myself up here, but it was sensational. Right. Slightly singed on the bottom because I let it boil dry at one point very briefly because you've got to like steam it for six hours. Anyway, thankfully, <laughs> the actual pudding itself was fine. So, you know, six I imagine hours. that's a massive relief for everyone listening. But yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a really nice Christmas. You know, I mean, it's just such a weird time at the moment. Like, I feel it's just really strange right now. Just sort of depressing generally. Yeah. I made the mistake of putting the news on and was that we've had the biggest infection rise in a day since the pandemic began today or in the last 24 hours we've had 40,000 new cases so you know wow. it's not it's not fantastic but I guess we're, we're just trying to stay positive I'm doing a lot of DIY that's, that's just consuming my life and it makes me feel so happy it's yeah. amazing how doing such small tasks can bring you so much joy yeah yeah I know I well yeah I the house needed me to put a hook up in the baby's room and I've been like it's a very simple task but i had been very lazy about it and then i finally did it and i was like well that's done and then i was like now that i'm doing stuff i'm gonna assemble this crib and then um the crib is missing about four bolts oh no (laughs) we got oh yeah we got a secondhand crib and apparently did not come with all of the bolt that it needs so i have to figure out something with that but yeah you we will no doubt be able to get one from there from the handyman store (laughs) I don't know what story you think that is. I don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a pretty good Christmas. The only the only problem with my Christmas is I talked to my parents on Christmas Day, and and there was this problem with like they they said that they're they're having family come visit on the twenty eighth, which is today, mm-hmm. from Minnesota, and I was like, don't do that. And they were like, yeah, we're still going to do that. And I was like, please don't do that. And then this was before Christmas. They told me this, and then on Christmas Day we had pleasant conversation, and then. And, and then I was like, so are they still coming to visit? And then they were like, yes. And why? And I don't know. It's just very annoying because they're like 70 and, um, you know, they're having these people come to visit from all the way across the country. And they're going to be hanging out with other family members, I'm sure. In oh, Minnesota. my God. That's then, crazy. Then they're going to be coming to visit my parents. And then I'm like, I just I don't want I don't want this to happen. And I'm very stressed out about it. And it's very stressful that they were still dismissive of me as if I'm some kind of worrier. I mean, I do worry, but as if I'm like worrying unjustified. Have they looked at the news? Like, I'm pretty sure the U.S. is about 10 times worse than everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd think. But they're like, no, we'll be safe. And I was like, it's not, there's not safe anymore. There's like, I don't know. So yeah. So now I'm thinking about that. And then, you know, and then Alice was like, you, sh- you shouldn't have been mad at them. And I was like, but I am mad at them. And they're like, yeah, but what if something happens and then you'll feel bad that you were angry at them? And I was like, I don't want the, I don't know, just the really bad. <laughs> what if, what if something happens? Like, that's so like what if they get COVID and then they die then you feel bad for telling them not to meet up with people yeah, who might I mean, have COVID that's the thing, right? yeah 
is like I'm like, what am I supposed to do here? I, it's a really there's a no win situation for me because I can't like if I don't tell them how I you know I don't know so I'm just supposed to be like yeah it'll be fine but I don't think it I don't know I'm worried about it and it's a dumb risk they've been doing very good with not taking risks and now I don't know why they're doing this. Well, at some point you know you have to let your parents go and be their own people, Matt. <laughs> you know they grow up and. Uh... It's tough, man. It's tough, but you got to let them have their independence. I suppose so. So, yeah. So, that was the other big thing this week. Anyways. Any- I talked to my family in Australia and they're all, like, hugging and, like, they're yeah. all, like, in the photos, they're just all over each other, like, as in, like, all holding each other. And you're just like, God, you guys are living in, like, a completely different world. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just feel like an idiot for leaving now. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Do you know, my auntie said to me back in March, she was like, get over here, like, get on a plane. We'll pay for you to come back. Just get back to Australia and I was like don't worry leave your, leave your husband your kid just leave them we'll get you into Australia I was, she's like we'll pay for you all to come back and I was like oh, all you, of you. you you don't need to worry like I was like this is all gonna blow over within a few months like seriously just don't worry about it and then here I am like coming up on a year later being like I wish I had gone yeah. um, but it's fine you know there are benefits to being here like i get to enjoy sleet out the window all the day sleet? today oh so. you got sleet we got sleet it was so fun <laughs> we were supposed to get snow and alice was super like she's like look there's like a 50 yesterday she was like there's like a 50 to 60 percent chance of snow and i was like neat i'll <laughs> believe that when i see it and then uh and then all day she's been mildly disappointed that there's been no no snow so. i mean it was so exciting when it looked like it was snow it was like the boys were like snow and <laughs> charlie didn't really he's not really remembered seeing snow so he was so excited and then it was like oh it's not snow it's just like raining with snow in it and it's just melting on the sidewalk this is not the fun stuff that the kids run out into being like snow yeah so we have uh, yet to have that experience with them but you know it was still kind of fun yeah i'm sure we <laughs> It's all there's tons of flooding around near my house, and we wandered around looking at flooded floodplains. Wow, that and, sounds exciting. Eh, what else are you gonna do? There's, there's very little things to occupy your time these days. Today, to um, to I had a senior citizen tell me that I should not be going outdoors at all, not even for walks. I was like, No, I'm pr- I'm pretty sure you're still allowed to exercise, and they're like, Nope, not allowed to exercise. You're only allowed to go out for water and groceries and work. It's like, Wait, you have to go out for water? Jesus Christ, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> he's walking to the well every day no. i'm pretty sure it's still legal to go out for walks like it is yeah it's definitely still, i was like i looked up on the government website and he was like well whatever do whatever you want i was like all right i will all right. that guy should talk to my parents <laughs> yeah. so so six months from now what are your predictions for uh late june late june Ooh, uh i reckon we'll be on we'll be nearing 70 percent of the population having been given the vaccine so we will be almost out of this feeling of worrying about it because once the 70 percent of the population has been vaccinated i believe that's when it's supposedly effective and i think it's going to take till at least June for that to happen. So I think we'll be coming up on that. It'll be summer and hopefully we'll be seeing the back of this absolute living nightmare. So we'll be coming into, I believe, a happy time. And that's when we'll be really celebrating Christmas. We'll be having an Australian Christmas in July. Yeah, Christmas in July. Because it'll be hot and that's what Australian Christmases are. So it's going to be lovely. (laughs) That's the reason for the season. I think in six months, uh, I'm going to make a fashion prediction. Oh, amazing. Thank you. I think that tails are going to make a comeback. Oh, yeah. Like tails on coats and things. Okay. I think it's going to be like, you know, I think people are going to be like, you know, six months from now, people are like, you know, I want to go out again. I want every, every, you know, like being outside is going to be, have this whole air of like, everything's a little bit nicer. It's a little bit fancier. People are going to be a little bit excited Mm -hmm. and everybody's going to be like, I want all my coats to have tails. So everybody like sports jackets, suit jackets, hoodies, everything tails. Tails are going to be the, and tails are coming back. Okay. Well, I definitely don't see that happening, but if it does, I'll be (laughs) super impressed with your uh, prediction abilities. I just feel like tails, the time has come again for tails. Okay. (laughs) I don't think there ever was a time for tails, but we'll see. Anyways, or maybe I've just been watching a lot of Fred Astaire movies and I was like, tails look sharp. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we should get on to our interview. Shall we proceed to our interview today? Yes. Fantastic. Excellent. <laughs>
Please welcome to the show, writer, comedian, Jen Ives. Jen, how are you doing today? Hello. I'm good, thank you. Yeah, how are you doing? <laughs> We're all right. Did you have a good Christmas, Jen? Yeah, it was pretty all right, considering, yeah, I got I spent it with my dad, and that's about it, really. How were things with, what did you do, like, food-wise? I was about to ask Matt if he had a turkey again, even though I know he's vegetarian, and he's told me, like, 50 times. Well, I'm vegetarian as well, but my dad isn't, so he had, like, a, a turkey crown, right, they call it, which is just like a, it's like a little thing in a bowl and I had a corn one <laughs> which is just like it's like a sausage it looks like a sausage yeah yeah. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. About? yeah yeah it's really weird it's not I mean it's all right uh, if you sort of put enough stuffing with it and stuff it kind of tastes like a, like a thing that is edible <laughs> Hello, it's definitely not a nice thing but it's a thing nonetheless covered in this weird like plastic that you're you're supposed to cook it in it's like a, a plastic that comes in it you're not supposed to take it off you're just supposed to pierce it and it's just like like an edible plastic or maybe it's not edible <laughs> no, it's fine it's all right I I don't recommend it necessarily i'm sure there's better alternatives but wait so do you like boil it or how is it or do you microwave it like how did you eat it no i don't think you do either. you have to put it in the oven for about an hour and then you have to sort of like wrestle it out of its hot plastic <laughs> sheath and then uh, <laughs> oh my god then, yeah it's really weird but it's a lot as well it's like i they think they call it a corn roast I don't know. just put if you just cover it in gravy it's fine yeah yeah there you go try to try not to think sounds about what delicious eating. what about you what did yeah. you guys have? Alice made onion and goat cheese tarts. Oh, nice. So they were just like little tarts. And then we had carrots and roast potatoes and kale and whatever sides. I don't remember. Oh, lots of, and yeah, lots of gravy. See, that sounds, that sounds like a real vegetarian's like Christmas dinner. That's like that's like someone who's been in the game for a while. <laughs> they know what they're doing. How long have you been vegetarian? Oh, a lot longer than it would seem. <laughs> like I just have never graduated to proper food. I would say probably about seven or eight years. I don't know. I, I've lost track. I'm, I'm not like counting the days off or anything. But yeah, still doing it. Well done. So. <laughs> On behalf of the Thank vegetarian you. community, we're all proud of you. Yeah, I've been trying to do vegan. You know, I've been trying to do it like yeah. wherever I can. But it's it, I'm finding it very. You're going to do veganuary? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm not. I I can't commit to that. I just, I've just been substituting things here and there. Like I found a cheese that was okay that I could kind of imagine. That's the thing about veganism. It's quite bleak. It's like, well, you find something that you like or you can tolerate and then you think, well, this is what it's going to be for the rest of my life. I'm never going to get to have like proper cheese again. <laughs> oh, well, it's kind of sad. <laughs> but I, it's, it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make. Eventually. I would really like to be fully vegan as well. And I have I have been slowly like cutting out most like dairy products because I found good cream cheese. I've found like good yeah. vegan cream cheese, good soy milk. Eggs right. are still an issue. I haven't found a good eggs egg substitute. Issue, yeah. And most cheese is pretty rank. Right. <laughs> yeah, it is, to be honest with you. Like, especially like mm. the coconut based ones, like they're not very nice. Like Via Life is okay. That's the one that I... But I will say there was really good coconut based ice cream in america yeah like, but see, that makes sense yeah. to me right because coconut is like a flavor that you could imagine right. being an ice cream whereas like cheese like no one wants to eat like some <laughs> coconut cheese like that's weird they weird. did like coconut flavored ice cream they would do like vanilla or chocolate or whatever it was just like the coconut base i think was good because i think yeah. coconut milk is pretty fatty so so it kind of works yeah well. i really like right. coconut ice cream and stuff we've been trying to eat quite a few vegetarian meals we've really got into the jenny craig like so no not jenny craig What's it called? Linda McCartney. Linda McCartney. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, a whole yeah. different thing. Yeah, Linda McCartney's like sausages, burgers, and they are actually surprisingly good. Like, I was surprised at how tasty they were. They are, mm. yeah. Their sausage rolls are great. You know, uh, there's like, a, you know, Richmond sausages. Like, the, the they like do like real sausages, but they also do a vegetarian one. It's the best one that I've ever had. And although I, sh you sh I should maybe be like uh, supporting a vegetarian brand or whatever, it just is oh, the great. best one. Mm. That oh, I'll check had. that out. So. Yeah, it tastes, it just tastes real. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're just like, this is vegetarian, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Promise. Yeah. <laughs> put it in a green bag and <laughs> nobody will know the difference yeah yeah sometimes when i'm like oh this tastes like real meat and then if i i think it's just because i haven't eaten meat in so long that i my my expectations are completely yeah. different because like sometimes if i'm with somebody who does eat meat and i'll be like oh my god this tastes just like meat and i'll like try it and they'll be like this tastes nothing like meat. this is disgusting <laughs> You like, don't oh, remember like what meat is. Like. For me, it's like, it's the same with like, yeah, it's like, you know, like fake yeah. bacon or whatever. Like my dad can like tolerate, like he will eat like a veggie burger or like veggie sausages. But then when it comes to that, like it's like a step too far. And it just, there's something like, yeah, like for me, like I, I've got used to it and I actually like it. And to me, like that's like a, a decent substitute. But for meat eaters, it just doesn't work. It's not a good introductory no. substitute. Yeah. So what's going on besides Christmas? Uh, what's going on in your life these days, Jen? Uh, Well, mainly, well, at the moment, just like 
not a lot just like Christmassy mm-hmm. stuff writing a lot because there's no stand up at the moment okay. really well at all hoping that we can come out of lockdown soon <laughs> I don't know uh, I suppose like the oh, the main things that have happened to me is I had a nose job oh wow <laughs> <But> that, <laughs> I always feel weird saying that it's like such a weird thing to say but but yes I did this was very relatively recently it was like two weeks ago oh my gosh yeah so that's congratulations yeah. I guess is yeah. that what you yeah. say I don't know <laughs> I don't know what you say to people well, when they've had a nose job yeah I don't I don't know what you say either I don't know it's just that's the main thing that I can think of that's like happened recently and it's not how do you do um day. how do you like, feel about it like, yeah I feel great about it <laughs> I'm like pretty open about it because uh I don't know like I wanted it done and I got it done and it didn't really hurt and it's made a difference and I don't know I don't, I don't particularly think it's anything to be ashamed of but it was a fun experience you know like it was exciting yeah. <laughs> like you could go under anesthetic and like not know if you're gonna wake up or not again. <laughs> it's pretty exciting <laughs> so it's exciting things happened to me this year. <laughs> when I was when I was like 17 or 18 I was feeling massively insecure about my nose and I remember saying to my grandma I was like oh like I just hate my nose so much I wish I could have a nose job expecting her to be like no your nose your nose is so beautiful and she was like I'll pay for it if you want it done. <laughs> I was just like, thank you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I still, there are so many things that I think I'd love to sort of get. I don't know. But then I just think, oh, I can't be bothered. I'll spend the money on a deposit for a bigger house or something. Yeah. I mean, it'd be oh, nice that, to have that, a garden. That oh, that, that, that worked. <laughs> that said, I would love an improvement on my nose. But but anyway, I definitely don't. I, I think it's worth doing. You know, like, I don't know. I think it's worth, if it's something that's important to you, I definitely, like, as in, how do you feel since do you feel like it has made a difference like as in when you look at your face do you feel like it looks different yeah definitely 100 percent. like i had a pretty big nose before and uh not there's anything wrong with that but because i am transgender I, it's just like when like some people get like full-on facial feminization surgery and i haven't i've not done that i just wanted to just get the nose a bit smaller because it just helped feminize my face also my nose wasn't just big it was also it had a deviated septum so it was actually like bent as well it looked oh. like i had my nose broken so now it's like a lot straighter it's like like comes down a little bit and it's like oh. I can breathe better also the good thing about if you're trans as well is and if you have like a nose job people are so awkward that they're just you know there's like a different like sort of level of expectation they're like oh yeah that's great you know because I can just be like, <laughs> like part of my journey or whatever and you don't really get much <laughs> stigma about it like they just expect like they're like oh we, we assumed that you had more things done <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing to do with pure vanity this is yeah exactly <laughs> uh, oh well I think it looks really good I, oh, I great. You know, yeah. yeah I didn't I didn't think it like as in I've watched some of your previous stand up I watched some of your stand up videos which I thought were fantastic and I never I didn't notice your nose in it in any kind of negative way but looking at it now it also looks very good so either way well done and and congratulations on behalf of the podcast (laughs) (laughs) that is that is Um, what you're supposed to say I think yeah it's like a congratulations I used to wear like very big rimmed glasses and uh, they would like completely cover my nose really so that's that's pretty much why uh, I'm not allowed to wear glasses for no. six months now so ev- like I can kind of see you guys <laughs> yeah. quite blurry but uh... I was gonna say yeah I don't know how bad your prescription is but I don't think I could manage for six months without glasses yeah it's like I mean my pres- I'm I'm mm-hmm. short-sighted so I'm fine now but like when I have to cross roads and stuff, it becomes <laughs> a little bit of an issue I never learned how to put contact lenses in so it's not it's probably not gonna um, happen now well lucky you don't have to go outside anymore eh yeah <laughs> What a time. Exactly, exactly. I can't read subtitles though, so no, no more. Oh, what no a loss! Films. <laughs> like, I don't think I could live. I know. Uh, <laughs> but so, like the experience of getting a nose job, like, do you get to pick out your new nose or? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, like, well, they don't give you like. A... Do they have, like a big like a lookbook of noses? <laughs> no, they, there's there's, <laughs> there's no catalog, unfortunately. But you do get to sort of like you can send over like ideas of like what you want. Like, oh, I kind of want this. I kind of want that they want to like manage your expectations a little bit as well because like you can't have anything like maybe if you if you were like Michael Jackson's surgeon or whatever and like you had enough money and a, enough clout <laughs> just to be like I want you to do this you have to do it but they but over here they've got you know like ethics and boys <laughs> and stuff like that um so <laughs> exactly but um no but they ask you what you want and like they try to they tell you what's realistically possible and stuff and then they just yeah. and then he just does it <laughs> So you, you make it sound like, like you he's um, like he just it, does like... it like he snuck up on, by, <laughs> snuck up on you like from behind with a chloroform cloth and just <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> it's not that different. I mean, the thing is, is, I mean, it's such an invasive and not dangerous, but like it has <laughs> risks and it's also like a very brutal surgery. Really? So, yeah, but it's so quick <laughs> and like so painless. It's, it's not like it. So what happens is you go in to the hospital and I was there for like, like on the day of the surgery, I was there for about half an hour filling in like some forms and stuff, some last minute forms. And then literally like they made me put on like a thing, you know, like a gown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like this, they make you put on a thing yeah. leaves way too much the imagination. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I had to wear a potato sack. It was like a very, very unofficial stuff. Um and then and then literally like in ten minutes they were like, right, you're going down now. I was like, oh shit. Because I, I just thought I'd have a bit longer to wrap my head around it on the day. But no, they were like, No, you're going down. I had to walk down da- I walked down there, which was weird, and then when it got on the gurney thing. And then they were doing that thing that they I don't know if you've ever had a surgery before where you have to learn an aesthetic or whatever. But they do that thing where they start putting it in you and then they and then they make conversation with you to try and distract you or to try and gauge level of consciousness you have but the problem is all the conversation is like their sort of like their standard oh have you been on any nice holidays lately and stuff like that and I was just <laughs> like no I haven't like this is like the time of over like, and then and then sh- and I was I have to admit like although I was like quite oh, yeah, I don't care, I don't care. when I was there on the thing I was actually shitting it a little bit like I, like because it was like it's just one of those instinctive things that I couldn't help it I felt genuinely like really scared because I was like oh god I'm gonna like I'm gonna die you know like it's ridiculous but then I just went to sleep and that was it really? I don't remember anything else it's like a, it's like about a four hour surgery I think hmm. oh how was staying stay in the hospital night. it was great like they're all really amazing like really nice yeah, it was fine. No. It was, it's like, because it's a cosmetic surgery, it's like a private hospital. So it's, yeah, it's nothing. It's easy. It was more, it was, I say hospital, it was more like an alleyway. Oh. When I say uh, yeah, doctor, no, I think that's a very loose sense of the word. <laughs> no, it was, well, yeah. <laughs> He had a certificate. And have, has your dad said anything about it? Did he say anything about it, like, after you had it done? Uh, yeah, like, well, it's just, well, when you first have it done, you know, it kind of messes up your face mm-hmm. because, like, you've got all these bandages over over your face, over your nose. I'm still quite bummed up, you can probably hear. Mm-hmm. Under your eyes is, like, super bruised because they break your nose. Like, they have to break your nose as part <sighs> of it. And they don't just break your nose, but they, like, cut under here and under here and they pull it up. And so like, I don't even want to, like, imagine what they're doing because oh, I had a, what's called an open rhinoplasty, which is like the most hardcore one, right? And uh, also I had another thing, which is like under here, which just brings the nostrils in a bit more. So it's like this really brutal one. Also, they do a thing where when you're having the surgery, they basically get like this kind of plastic bag. Like I made the mistake of watching a video of this before I went in, but like they get like a plastic bag and they like shove it down your throat. And like, what a shove oh, and like, God. put it through your nose. Mm. Like, it's really brutal and that's to like catch all the blood. Because <laughs> they they're literally like breaking your nose and they're like moving bones around. <laughs> and, Whoa, you man, know, that's just, intense. They're, they're playing God. <laughs> yeah you'd be surprised how little pain there is actually when you wake up like it never really never I, honestly i know you never believe people when they say this but it never really like hurt like it was just it was just uncomfortable and just felt a little bit mm. like very tired and like out of it but not that does really that hurt. is hard to believe because it's from what you described it sounds yeah. horrible so. but i'm glad it didn't <laughs> i just have this like visual of like them with their like knees on your yeah. face you know <laughs> like as in like just holding your face down with their knees just in there with crowbars and <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Your nose wasn't yeah. that big. <laughs> it would require yeah. crowbars. But yeah, gosh. So <laughs> so just out of curiosity, and I, I'll cut this out if, it, if you don't want to talk about it, but how much does something like that cost? Sure. Well, yeah. it depends. Like it's, I've, so I've been saving up for it for quite a while but it's it depends really like to get I, th- I, mean, I don't know all of the costs of different procedures it depends on what your procedure mm-hmm. exactly is if you have like a closed rhinoplasty which is basically just slightly less invasive and is for people that maybe just want like a minor cosmetic change to their nose or something i think you're looking at about five thousand pounds or something oh does that seem like a lot or not a lot to you it seems like a lot yeah <laughs> i don't know I, well i don't know I'd... well no i mean it is but mine was more than that significantly it was like closer to about ten thousand wow because it's like yeah which is it's, i know it sounds mad i know and it is but no i mean uh... but they do credit you know and you don't have to pay it all at once and uh if you don't pay it they they come around and like smash your nose and, uh, <laughs> it's like hey we have the old nose back at the office and we can put it back on uh, yeah <laughs> 
But if you think that's a lot, though, I mean, take into account the fact that, like, if 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 you wanted to have like full blown FFS facial feminization right. surgery, which is like super, like a nose job is just like a part of it, like it's a part of it, and then they do yeah. stuff like they, I don't know, they do stuff, they can do stuff to your chin, they can like do stuff here, they they cut open. Like this is the most crazy one that they do, I think, is that they like your hairline, right? Because like generally cisgendered women have a lower hairline, just like eight out of ten of the time or whatever. So what they can do is they they literally like cut along your hairline literally peel the skin back to reveal your skull and then pull it all up and like stitch it all back together to like give you a smaller forehead which is like it's it's it looks and <laughs> is barbaric but you know again it achieves a nice result with people <laughs> but if you wanted to right, right. Start, it's making me really conscious of how massive my forehead is <laughs> well, like, no, no, no 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 but no but i mean it just it just costs a lot yeah it's like it's like you're looking more in the kind of, well do you know what let me just look it up now because <laughs> i don't want to give false information hold on sorry. oh it's it's nobody's gonna fact check this i'll be fact checking it i'll be writing <laughs> well, into the podcast because i've, I've not had it so i don't want to just be like oh yeah i was mostly curious because i i lived in america okay so in america i was going to just say it costs anywhere between 50 to sixty thousand dollars yeah oh my Um, gosh wow see that's the thing is like i'm so used to like american prices for healthcare. Which is insane, right? That, like, now I have no idea how much anything costs anymore. And I feel like everything in America yeah. was always, like, way overpriced because of the private healthcare system. And so I was curious how much things were in Britain in the private system. So. Well, I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. I go back and forth with, like, like I remember when my yeah. friend said her mum got a boob job because she said that breastfeeding had like destroyed her breasts and I remember at the time being like oh my gosh like she should just love her breasts for the fact that they fed her baby and not worry about it and then since then I have breastfed two babies and I'm like oh I totally get it like I get why she did that and I would consider it myself because it just it's like I don't know until you experience it yourself I just don't think yeah if you're not happy like yeah I I definitely get it and potentially I I would consider it but at this stage I definitely wouldn't so that's great that sounds like a nice like a great you know, a thing that you've done. <laughs> I, don't know, I, fucked up. I don't know what yeah. I was trying to say there, but yeah, no, I, I, I endorse it. Yeah. I think that's oh, I get you. Yeah. You um, endorse it. I mean, you know, I, uh, yeah. And promote so it. So looks great. You dyed your hair. That looks great too. New, new hair color. So anyway. what's, uh, what's it been like being in Hackney throughout like the lockdown and what's your life been like sort of day to day well during the first lockdown you know like the big sort of scary one it was really kind of shit it was like obviously it was bad for everybody i was feeling the exact same way that everybody else was right like worried cautious you know lonely all that kind of you know i've had some nice things happen while like during lockdown you know i have got signed to an agency and i've had a couple of things like a couple of written things get made and like things like this and like so i'm really hesitant to moan because like i know people that have lost their job or have Mm -hmm. lost family members even so i haven't had i definitely haven't had the worst time of it really aside from just a little bit of loneliness and a a, a lot of boredom like non-covid things like you were talking about you signed with an agent that's exciting and you you wrote some things what kind of things you write yeah yeah i did yeah it was like so i did i did a sketch series for hattrick productions oh amazing uh, for their um, podcast division wasn't my i didn't write the whole project i wrote some sketches for it and i was in it it's a thing called seance cast it's written by um charlie dinkin and zoe tomlin don't know if you know those two they're, they're really brilliant really great writers i think zoe charlie worked for the bbc for a bit but um no it's it was, it's really good it's a podcast and it's about like these two young women who are they're doing like seances mm-hmm. with like a ouija board and stuff in different locations and then like to do with their childhood and then like those locations and those seances to the other side like inspire the sketches they're, all the sketches have a kind of like paranormal-ish sort of horror sort of theme to them so it's like comedy horror it's, it's i, I really but even, even the stuff that I didn't write is really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of it may be even arguably better. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not be crazy, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, on top of that, I've just done a few like sketches for various platforms and stuff. Like I uh, did one recently for Next Up oh, and nice. stuff like that. So yeah, it's just, it's been fun. You know, it's been really nice being able to get things. That's yeah. awesome. That's so, so have you, how did you get into sort people. of sketch comedy? Well, I write a lot and I do a lot. I film my own like stupid sketches and stuff Mm -hmm. that I I was just like I just put them on my Twitter and on my YouTube channel and stuff and actually like that that job that I got was probably a result of that you know of like putting out daft things online 
uh it's not it's not like i i've never really thought like oh, i want to do sketches or whatever but you know they're a great way to right. sort of mess around and <laughs> get paid for it like they're fun right they're like silly little things and also with with the fact that stand-up isn't happening anymore <laughs> not forever but like at the moment there's no stand-up no probably forever <laughs> <laughs> no don't say that. i need like an outlet you know i need something to focus on so although i'm writing a lot of long-form stuff as well like various projects i you know that takes a while right and it mm -hmm. takes a lot longer to pay off you know but whereas mm -hmm. sketches like turn around on them it's quite quick and they have to be like topical and current and all this kind of stuff and, uh yeah it's fun it's a fun exercise it's, it's like stand up in that way you know that it you know you're trying to say something hopefully original hopefully fresh and current but, but it'll be immortalized forever in a video <laughs> uh, mm, cool so jen uh in terms of the next six months yeah. what do you have planned what do you have for like goals that yeah. you're setting for yourself where do you want to be what do you want to be doing uh okay well <laughs> i guess like because of this whole not to bring up covid again but just, just because mm -hmm. of the whole fact that we haven't been able to do anything i think it's i think it's put into perspective quite a lot what you know what you want to do and uh for me i just want to firstly have sex again at some point would be nice <laughs> fingers to, crossed uh yeah you never know secondly i really want to i like, really want to travel again because like i i've never like really traveled much it's always been that thing that i've sort of never, never i thought i didn't care about it you know I've, I've been to a few places like i've been to like berlin and like paris and stuff like that but i've never been anywhere like quite far away so when i can like i'm mm. gonna do that i'm gonna go oh. somewhere see the world any, a little bit um, any particular places like america uh, japan well, so I to, about it, really. Australia. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to America. I want to go to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm scared of Australia. I have to admit, like, I, I'm a bit scared of it. You're right to be. I'm sure you probably hate hearing this, but you have to understand this is from my life. This is from my very sheltered British point of view, right? It's just that, like, it just get like, the wildlife scares me. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't, like, the great thing about Britain is it's somewhere where, like, cannot really be harmed by an animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you, like, a dog might bite you or, like, a cow might like, <laughs> go mad and like like lay on you or something but that's about the biggest threat that you have like like it's so much so right there was there's this like you know like in america and stuff like cryptids and urban legends and things like that like monsters it's like oh my god there's a loch ness monster and well that's not in america but <laughs> you know it's like yeah i was gonna say we famously picked the one <laughs> <laughs> you know it's okay 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 you know uh el chupacabra or like mm -hmm. um there's a bigfoot in the woods or whatever over here in <laughs> england at least not scotland in england the best thing that we have is that like oh there's in cornwall there's like this there's a there's like a panther like around like there's this genuine like thing about there being this like escaped big black cat that's like you know roaming around the, the, the countryside <laughs> but in australia you you don't even need urban edges because the things that you have there are so horrific so like how how australian is this on christmas day so i called horrific. up my family so, like, to say happy christmas and my aunt was like oh we went swimming at the beach this morning but we had to get out because there was a white pointer <laughs> what's that that's a shark that eats people yeah oh, See, that's, okay that's, that's um, See, yeah, yeah, I will say that. Yeah, like even moving just from America, like knowing that there were no poisonous snakes in Britain, like I feel like cleared up ten percent of my brain. It's like, so I nice, just... isn't it? Yeah. I love that yeah. because it is really like stressful having to go home. And I have to like, I do genuinely have to worry, like if I go back to my parents' farm or whatever, you know, often we do see these black snakes called dugites. And if they bite you, you do die. You know, like it's quite, it is quite intense. Or you're bound to see like a massive hairy spider at some point, no matter where you are. That's the thing, isn't it? It's the spiders. Also though, I mean, I, I understand why that is like a great character building thing or whatever. Like it's, I, I understand how that's like interesting to grow up somewhere where it must be quite humbling, you know, like to realize that you're not the center mm, of the universe. I'm very humble things out there can take you down or whatever <laughs> but on a practical level like i don't really care like i just don't i don't particularly want to die like it, i think it's absolutely when like, i don't really care like, I just, good good impulse yeah you hear stories in america right i'm like oh, <laughs> i'm gonna do like an accent now just to warn you but like it's like um oh yeah come to california <laughs> it's like well I don't... wow no stop stop that was awful <laughs> i'm an american <laughs> howdy <laughs> wow but uh but it's like i would but like yeah i'll come but i'm not going jogging in like the canyons or whatever because like there's like a bloody flipping uh, a bloody flipping lion, lion. Like, the they're everywhere where do you think happens in california like, not, the, 
yeah coyotes or what about um about like no bears right like like all that kind of stuff like you see like youtube videos of people like oh my god look there's a bear in the garden and they're like going, sorry the yard in the yard and they like go oh, my and like, oh my god it's attacking if me a bear, like can you imagine like <laughs> it wants some picnic mate <laughs> it's so z- i don't know it just, yeah. i think it's insane oh, okay. I'm scared to get out of me, that was so. good so uh so traveling and um sex maybe a combination of the two you know yeah uh, yeah mix and match mix and match yeah. Yeah. yeah a little sex tourism why not <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah excellent do you have any like so, big swing predictions for the world any any wild predictions for what may happen in six months so i was thinking about i, I did i was having to think about it and for some reason the only thing that i could that kept coming to my mind was that like i just think that ventriloquism is going to come back in a really big way I just, <laughs> <laughs> and i don't know why i've just got a feeling because it's been very quiet for a long time right like it hasn't there hasn't been like a big ventriloquist for a while and i think are you guys familiar with orville the dark yes and yes think, he passed know. away the guy orville who did it passed away like a couple <laughs> a few years ago he did pass away yeah but i've got a feeling he's gonna make a comeback i think he's like an, you know how people say like intellectual property now they say that a lot like it's an ip i think he's gonna come back in a big way matt do you not know what orville the duck is no i don't know that. it's a ventriloquist puppet right that this guy used to do i'm gonna try and explain him to you i'm gonna try and describe him. okay just don't do that accent again no I won't. Uh-huh. so first off he's a duck right but he's really big <laughs> he's like th- he's like this b- i know this is a pocket he's big right and um he's green he's fluorescent green and he's got a nappy on <laughs> a diaper oh none of this sounds pleasant a, a giant on, green duck in a diaper nappy. that sounds horrifying um, <laughs> and he has the mind of a child <laughs> oh god <laughs> and, and he sings and he's northern as well. That sounds offensive for some reason. I don't know to who, but do but... an impersonation of, of Orville. Can you do it for us now? I actually can. He sings a song. Yeah, it goes. Um, I wish I could fly <laughs> right up to the sky, oh. but I can't. That's what he found. I'm looking at pictures of him and this is upsetting. It's there's no other word for this upsetting. Oof. Oh, you found some pictures. So you think ventriloquism, based on the fact that Orville the Duck is such an appealing piece of IP, you think that uh, ventriloquism is gonna come back. I I literally <laughs> have seen yeah. one ventriloquist that I have not been embarrassed to like I've I've literally paid to see one ventriloquist and it's Nina Conti. Oh, I wouldn't pay. So <laughs> But they're not expected to come pay. back if nobody's paying for it. <laughs> I would have paid to see it. I just think it will. It's one of those things, like, in British culture, there's, like, mm. there seems to be, like, peaks and valleys of when ventriloquism is in and out. And I think it feels to me like it's one of those things that's, like, a, a post-war thing. For some reason, like, whenever there's some, some big tragedy right. happens, we want, like, a new ventriloquist. <laughs> I think Nina Conti probably came out, like, shortly after 9-11. <laughs> I, like I love this theory. <laughs> that, like, in times of national tragedy, the gentle salve that a nation needs is a person talking to a wooden doll <laughs> yeah. the, uh, or a green duck. <laughs> yeah. We just had COVID. We're gonna have like a new thing. I went. To a, I, I had a music lesson once with this woman in New York. <laughs> uh, she was quite a famous music teacher. She taught. She taught the woman who sang in the Phantom of the Opera movie. Anyway, so I went to her. Oh God, I probably shouldn't say that because then people know who she is. Anyway, she basically started off the lesson <laughs> by like out. offering me alcohol. So we start <laughs> drinking. Then she tells me she had a facelift. Then we're in the middle of doing this music lesson i'm like standing by the piano and she disappears and she comes back with a doll and she's like doing the proper thing like her her, her mouth's not moving and i was just like oh i'm gonna get murdered like that's what's <laughs> happening and this is not a anyway that was the weirdest experience were, were you a little like like no this is a pretty interesting way to get murdered yeah i was like well i guess i've had an interesting life you know i mean it's one way to go like uh why not but anyway that... was she like an eccentric sort of lady like in a loft apartment with like a big piano and stuff? yes like, yes like massive grand like piano, piano and it was one of those wow, things where it was just classic cool, new york where she's like tell me about yourself what do you do what do you do you know oh i'm walking here <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need you guys to stop doing these voices. I really need that to stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would like um, to so sorry, life. Matt. Oh. Um... <laughs> <laughs> great so ventriloquism is going to make a big comeback look for it next summer that's no i, I love it i think it's fantastic it. i hope it does great <laughs> are you going to get into ventriloquism no you know i think that ventriloquism might make a comeback because that. people are just so desperate for human interaction <laughs> that they're just like i'm just gonna start talking to this doll <laughs> <laughs> i think that's what happened with that lady in new york yeah yeah um, <laughs> 
cool. So, yeah. uh, Jen, we are not going to say goodbye to you because through the miracle of editing, this interview will continue seamlessly in six months' time. But one thing we do ask our guests oh, is yeah. we oh. ask them to set up a joke that they do not know how it will end. And then we'll get the punchline from you in six oh, months. Right. Okay. Uh, why did the Italian-American <laughs> go to the laundrette? Oh, forget about it. That's none of your business. <laughs> that's the punchline. <laughs> No, that's, <laughs> that's honestly the best thing I could come up with. Um, that's fair. Without, without it wasn't being too like sort of like culturally insensitive. So, see, that was the fear there. But um, yeah, yeah. But I, I think really like something you... about white vests or something about gabagool. Ooh. But I couldn't figure anything out. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's it's best to just walk away from that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those premises but uh yeah no i think that was you really you really walked a line there you threaded that needle yeah it still implies violence and mafia connections Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's fine what i loved is that you've already managed to get an accent back in which i was really loving the the accent did i do did i do Um, that last time am i that predictable um well like the matthew was quite annoyed about i think about our accents by the end of it that we were doing something different (laughs) He's just, just jealous. Matt, Matt just because you can't it. do a British accent, Matthew. I can do a British. Oh, I can do a British accent. Oh, I can see it's pretty flawless, that right? Was pretty good, to be honest. I yeah, that. thank you. <laughs> thank you. How have your six um, months been, Jen? We've been. Oh, I was about that's to ask that's our question, good. Jen. We're Sorry. here to talk about you. <laughs> that's all right, uh, Jen. How have the last six months been treating you? Yeah. Okay. It's been nice, sort of got, coming back to normal a little bit, hasn't it? Like yeah. that's been fun. I've I've been yeah. g- going out. I've had a, a carvery one time. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I know. Just living the life, right? Back to you know, back to stand up. That's been nice. I had a few jobs and stuff. It's, I quit my main job. That's something I did. Oh, oh well, yeah. Good. Congratulations. Yeah, so that's about it. Probably not the best time to quit your job, but yeah. I did. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's about it, really. I mean, yeah. nothing. It has I quit to, my job. And not... it... Oh, did you? Yeah, but I make my wife support me, so, you know. <laughs> Didn't you have a baby um, and stuff? I did have a baby, yeah, so I... A li- as a little, I quit... bit, a little bit more, imp- like, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, it, I mean, it's just, it, you know, but mostly I just didn't want to work, so... Yeah, the, no, that's it's a, The baby's a good excuse to not work anymore, so... How is the baby? Oh, he's all right. He's, uh, huge and, yeah. uh... How big? <laughs> and he loud. Be? Uh, he is... Let me see, like he's five... He just turned five... Yeah, he's giant. He's, like, 90th percentile in terms of, like, he looks... He's already in, like... He's five months old. He's already in nine-month clothing, so, uh, he's about twice as big as he should be, <laughs> or as the average yeah. baby of that size. Is, so but bigger he's bigger than uh, the average baby <laughs> so. yeah, exactly. that's how we do in america big babies <laughs> when matt matt just goes around being like um look obviously I'm, just because he's bigger than your baby doesn't mean he's better than your baby even though he probably <laughs> is but i don't want you to just because yeah, he could to crush your baby that. that's fine yeah quality just... over quantity when it comes to babies i think <laughs> so i wish he's pretty quality too wait what was your old job some boring fucking thing on computer okay. like it was um sure. i always get bored like talking about it it's, it's like uh photoshopping documents shipping okay. records and stuff like that <laughs> oh, all right never mind that's fine yeah no i mean it's it's boring as fuck so i'm glad you quit quit that so that's good <laughs> let me see last last time we talked you predicted that ventriloquism would come back in a big way did I? Uh, yes. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. a wise prediction. <laughs> yeah. Ventriloquism. Yeah, I haven't seen anything, uh, thank goodness, as far as ventriloquism. I don't You've know. You've been if you... hanging out in the wrong circles. Like, it is yeah. very big. It's, it, it's big on the kind of like underground circuit. You oh, it's really. Yeah. Yo, it's too indie for me. I'm too mainstream for that. Give kind it a of couple show. more years and you'll see it break into the mainstream. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. It'll get out to the suburbs wherever I live, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> okay. And then I think your other prediction is that you're going to have sex again. Have you asked? I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to talk about that. I'm happy to report that that did yeah. happen. Um, Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah, it did. It happened a couple of times. Yeah, all right. But it hasn't happened for the last few months. Which is, uh, it happened like shortly after I said it would happen, and then uh-huh. it stopped happening. So I, oh. I was really bad at it. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> that um, was fun. I, I'm sure it'll. I'm sure it'll come yeah. back. You know, soon. It's all, yeah, yeah. Uh, just like ventriloquism. <laughs> it's, an, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like ventriloquism, and then my lips didn't move the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was wondering, because uh, you said you wanted to travel. Obviously, that's not been massively possible. But have you done any traveling, even within the UK? I mean, I went to Swanley today. Does that count? I feel like it maybe doesn't count. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jen. We were not looking for Swanley. That's... <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. No Swanley but allowed. But thanks for playing. A, I went to a beef eater in Swanley. Um, oh yeah with my dad Ooh, and fancy. sister today have you ever been to uh, a beef eater before you, you know what i've never been to one except i went to one today <laughs> for the first you're, time you're ever lying. you did you're not lying. i swear did to really? christ i swear to that's so weird we were driving back from morkham <laughs> and tavish was freaking out in the car so we just needed to stop somewhere so like the only place that was open was there was a beef eater just off the highway and we went there and had a cup of coffee and sat down so we could calm down and get him out of the car I'd never oh, been. I love that you're both you're both vegetarians. Yeah, and both in a well, you made the right decision by not having any food because it's a bit of a shit show in there. To be I honest would with imagine, you. yeah. Like it's already called Beef Eater, and they right. <laughs> it's already one didn't, strike. <laughs> they didn't. They only had. They had. They had multiple vegetarian options, but when it actually came to that point when you have to ask what they have or, or, or ask for what you want, it was that thing where they were like. Sorry, we're all out of that. Sorry, we don't have that. She offered me tuna. I was like, no, that, that's not vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. and, I love uh, that when you tell people you're vegetarian. So fish then? Yes. Yeah, so, oh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, I had the, the burger. It's like a, what's it called? The Beyond Burger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was fine. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it beyond a burger. I'd call it right. like, <laughs> relatively like near to a burger, but it's definitely yeah. not beyond it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was certainly still burger adjacent. It yeah, hadn't yeah. quite it wasn't transcended like some crazy burger new yet. thing that I've yeah. never that you've never heard of. Like, wow, I can't conceive what this is. Like clearly supposed yeah, to be yeah. a burger. <laughs> but it was fine. And they're all very nice and <laughs> I'm yeah, sure they yeah. I'm sure they do a, a I'm sure they work hard and stuff. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I feel bad. I, I'm getting too down on beef eater. It actually used to be a really big like British staple. Like there used to be a lot more of them around. But now yeah. they're kind of like dwindling, probably because of um, vegetarians and stuff. I imagine hipsters, <laughs> D- dirty vegetarians. <laughs> I, you know what? We had a perfect. I'll tell you, we stopped at a service station earlier in the trip, and that was a lot more stressful because it was full of people, and the beef eaters was not full of people, and that was really nice. So we just sat at a table and enjoyed a cup of coffee. And, but isn't that uh, the most worrying sign in a restaurant, though? Like, fine if you're going in there for coffee, that's fine. Like, no one cares about mm. that. But like. If you go into a restaurant for food and there's no one around, it's mm-hmm. like not yeah. the best omen. It's not it? a good sign, is it? I love that, but <laughs> that's what. I, but I like to eat, so I'll often eat at weird hours just so that I can avoid rushes of people. I just don't want a lot of people in my restaurant. What's a uh, weird hour to eat? Well, like five a.m. <laughs> Three in the morning. I don't. Like yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get those potatoes out at four a.m. Yeah. And <laughs> no, I. Well, I don't know. Like, yeah, like three or four in the afternoon. Like, kind of between lunch and dinner. Whatever. I basically eat like an old person. I'm just like getting my. <laughs> I got to be in bed by Lord. seven. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> hey Jen, I saw that you were in um, it, like a massive American. The New York Times. Ma- you were in yeah, the, the New, New York, York Times, Times, Jen. How, that's amazing. That's epic. I was. Congratulations I was in on that. the fucking New York. York Times, baby. <laughs> oh, I'm walking oh. over here. <laughs> they may, re- when they hear this voice, they might remove it from the archives. <laughs> oh, you, are, you be... already can't read it. You have to have like a subscription to it. I can't even uh, read it anymore. So I'm old news. I'm yesterday's chip uh, paper now. But yes, I was in the New York Times. I, I never have get a bored of saying it. <laughs> yes. Do you? Uh, um, I do, yeah. So wait, so no, what? I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't in the uh, like the British version of you know, like the physical like oh. British version of the New York Times. That's like it's really light. There's like not a lot of pages to it. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't deemed important enough to be in that. But on in the American one, I was in it. So I was thinking like, wow, like Martin Scorsese could have read about me, right? I felt like he reads the New York Times. Like, <laughs> right. like oh, I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, he's going to cast me in his next film. Which is like, <laughs> Somebody go get me this Jen Ives girl. I want her for my yeah. next picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You never know. There was a picture of me in there, so... Yeah, there was. Yeah, it was really... <laughs> that was very nice. How did... Uh, so how did you draw the attention of the old grey lady, as it were? 
sorry. Which is a nickname for the Nick for the New York Times. They call you know it doesn't matter. How did so how so how did all that happen? Uh how did it happen? I can't remember. <laughs> I was um <laughs> I think I think my agent sent me a thing saying that the New York Times had been in touch because they were writing an article about specifically trans comedians in the UK who are talking about like the gender critical movement and stuff. And there aren't that many of us really, so I guess I kind of fit into that category. And we were like, wow, yeah, that's really good promo. That's like a really lovely thing to have on your sort of bio, like you're in the New York Times. And it was nice, you know, they interviewed me over the phone. We talked for like four hours or something. No, maybe not that long. Yeah, maybe. Wow, maybe. really? It was a while. Maybe it wasn't that long. But I said a lot of like slanderous things. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually it was edited down into like a few very short bits. And yeah, I had my pictures in there. It was, but it was all very exciting at the time. I'll, I'll tell you that. Someone came and photographed me. I was like, oh, <laughs> hello. I was going to say it looked like nice professional photography. Yeah. Yeah, she made me sit on the grass which was <laughs> I feel like like she's a really great <laughs> photographer but I just think it's funny when like like because the article is supposed to be me like it's supposed to be like about being funny and about this kind of stuff but she was like why don't you just sit on the grass in kind of like a sultry way <laughs> I was like yeah I do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I was, it's like I was waiting for a picnic to start or something but it was a nice picture yeah, yeah. And, I, and I use it so yeah it's like you're a Victorian lady just this <laughs> hanging out in the park <laughs> people do say that I had a little parasol <laughs> it was lovely yeah um, I thought it looked awesome. It was. I was just, I was super excited when I saw it because um, it came up, it came through on my email, and it was nothing like I do follow you on social media, but it was not through following you that I saw it. It was through like just randomly, and I was like reading through, and I was like, oh my god, that's mm. Jen! Like it was really, it was really yeah, exciting. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, like, I feel like it still hasn't really sunk in how kind of mad it is. It's not, it's not what I thought was going to happen six months ago. Kind of, I guess, in the theme of your podcast yeah. my family don't care <laughs> no one i know reads the new york times but um i've got a lot of nice uh comments about it so i'm pretty yeah. happy also surprisingly like there were some like horrendous comments on the twitter post of it which, oh. but ge- well there always is but generally i think it was you know i didn't get any like really bad hate mail or anything like that so mm. i don't know new york loves me baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> Do you, how do you feel when you, like, when people do make, you know, main comments or whatever, do you, does it upset you or do you feel like it doesn't affect you or, like, how, how does it, yeah, I've, how does it make I've you feel? I've been thinking about this recently, actually. I think, um, I think, because I, I have been receiving quite a lot of them recently because of a few videos that I've made and stuff, but I, oh. but I was going to say, I think the problem is, is that it's, they're kind of wasting their time because unfortunately, like, I think I might be internally broken because I actually oh. don't Because <laughs> you're a comedian? Fuck. Well, mm, yeah. <laughs> it could be that. But also, I, I don't know, like, I kind of like it and I kind of don't give a fuck and I just feel like they're sort of barking up the wrong tree with me because, hmm. like, I'll use it somehow. So, yeah, it's That's fun. so nice. That's so great that you feel like yeah. that, though. Like, I think that's fun. And I saw that with, you know, your video promo for Peak yeah, exactly. Trans, which I loved, Thank by you. the way. Oh. And I, I just thought that was so funny the way you use, you know, what that woman had said in the video was was just like brilliant. I really recommend yeah. uh, to anyone listening to go check that I out. I mean, it's um, uh, what do they Jen's call that Twitter. on YouTube to get around it legally? It's um, fair use. Fair use. That's it, isn't it? Because she basically she made yeah. a video sort of like slagging me off, um, and then I just took the video she made slagging me off, which, in which she used one of my videos in it. So I guess I'm okay, right? I'm covered, hopefully. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I don't care. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was awesome. And I think that's so good when you can turn that stuff around. I, I think that it's something that's taken me a while to get used to. Because when I first started doing TikTok videos and all things like that, and I get mean comments i found it really hard mm. to deal with and now i do, i don't I just don't really care anymore yeah. but um yeah yeah i think it takes it takes a bit of time i think maybe like as in but i i don't know i think i just i just wondered if it affected you or not and it's good that you i mean obviously i'm just quite strong. i'm not a robot you know <laughs> Like there was a comment on this thing that I made for E4, which was about trans women in sports. And there was a, it was a very silly video, you know, it's just me being like kind of silly about it and everything and kind of pretending that, I'm, that I hate sports and that kind of stuff, which I do actually, I don't know why I said pretending. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, then, uh, but then someone left a comment that said, 
oh, this is all very well if you're an overweight trans person like Whoa. this person. <laughs> but they were like, but real. But they oh, were like, God. but most trans people are actually very good at sports. And I was thinking, I, I had a moment where I was like, shut up. But it was more me. just, it was more just a sort of like insecure weight thing. But um, yeah. but I, 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 can, I think I can shrug it off quite quickly. That's good. It's yeah. best not uh, to read them. Actually, yeah. I know a lot of people say that, but like. Like, like at a certain point, like it's 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 difficult to view these people as people, really, which is bad. But especially when they have, like, because I'm one of these people, like online, I put myself out there, like my pictures out there, my real name is out there, you know, I make videos, like, all this kind of stuff, like mm-hmm. where I live, not my actual address, but roughly where I live, it's all out there. Like I just so, mo- but most people that leave these comments, they're like their pictures, just like an old image from the '90s or like a an anime character or something like that. I can't yeah, relate. Yeah. To it. Yeah. Yeah, and they're so yeah. I mean, they they're just they're able to do it like under a sort of guise of really someone else. But if you saw them in the street, they probably would never say. You know, like that's the thing is that that I rem- remind myself is that I don't actually. Yeah, I think actually also a lot of the time when people say horrible comments. I think they're probably just quite unhappy people. And that's what I remind myself as well. Is like, I almost am tempted to comment back. Like, I'm really sorry you're hurting and I hope that you feel better soon. <laughs> you know, like, I, I think just, like, I, you're right. But I, th- but I think like, so I have like every day, like I fight a desire to say mean things to people online. Like, like there are lots of people. There, there are lot- no, honestly, like there are lots of people that I would like to actively be mean to and actually probably wouldn't feel much, would, wouldn't feel much guilt about it because I think they're dangerous, bad people. But I, yeah. but I have that mm. thing in me that stops me from doing it because I, I don't want to be misrepresented and I, I'm not interested really in hurting people feelings and I don't really care I just think some people just don't have that filter and they don't think of the consequences and you know I know a lot of people who do like you can talk about like oh people are snowflakes now whatever but the truth is people do get affected by the stuff they read online so uh, Mm. I feel like it's best not to be too blatant with my hatred (laughs) yeah Mm. oh that's that's i go for passive aggression you know that's more that's right (laughs) i'm that's a forte i'm a big fan of just like blocking and moving on because yeah i just i i don't know one time i engaged in a twitter in like a facebook argument with somebody i didn't even know about something like that i thought was blatantly sexist and misogynistic and he seemed to differ on that opinion (laughs) and uh and and then i got in this huge argument and then the whole thing was is like he was so stupid that it would really just upset me on a level that I couldn't imagine he was that upset about. Like, and and it was so he was like so stupid. Like he was just like he stopped even making arguments. He just went and looked at my Facebook profile and then started making fun of what my degree was. And I was just like, what? But see, that's the kind of thing that. But see, that's the kind of thing that I would do. So like when people oh. comment, when when, <laughs> no, like, when people comment, I mean, like, I was I was arguing with you, Jen. It was I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, probably <well, it> <laughs> when when people comment on my YouTube video, it's like I kind of like I generally I don't reply but if it's something that is like like you said like stupid enough you're like oh my god like I will look at their videos and see what kind of things they like try and build up a picture of them as a person and then I will like just say something that I don't believe to kind of just bait them into continuing to reply to me like nothing horrible just something that is like stupid right like a bit like how in that video like I posted a joke to her and it got her really pissed off but the thing is is like (laughs) but the thing is is like I feel like with these things it's like you're entering into a debate with somebody like on bad faith like you've made no agreement to actually have a proper debate to have rules to like be nice to each other like one of you is always going to be like trolling the other it's just like yeah it's a waste yeah. of time really yeah it's all bad fa- like that's the thing is i've stopped engaging with any of these things because it's just like you're not you're not here as like a person who wants to learn and grow and understand anything you just you came in here like being a shitty person <laughs> you're gonna leave here being a shitty person and i just there's nothing i can do about it except for yeah. make my own make myself upset so yeah I'm just, I'm gonna, 100%. yeah 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 it sucks yeah so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not not worth it. Um I was just wondering um Jen you were doing like quite a bit of you're doing like sketches and quite a lot of writing and stuff. How's that all been going? Are you, have you still been doing that sort of thing? Yeah, you know, I've been working away at stuff like I always have something on the go like I've got a few projects that I'm sort of just doing myself like self-producing them but then I've had mm-hmm. some writing work, a little bit of like TV like writing stuff and nice. um 
and yeah like sketches for a couple of different companies a few articles and stuff like that a lot of it hasn't come out yet bits of it have like it all takes so long to come out doesn't it it's like you make yeah. something and then they have to like it's like usually about six months before things start trickling out so yeah like i'm i've been busy but i don't know when any of it's gonna come out so uh what about you yeah. guys have you guys been up to anything fun in that way just this <laughs> yeah um matt's making like three podcasts i've got i don't know i've been i've got quite a lot of other work and stuff on and then i've been doing my little videos now and then yeah your videos and, are great oh That's thank you lot. when i yeah i don't do them that often because i don't have a huge amount of spare time but and we're going to Australia in October, so we're like now just moving to like get everything ready to kind of get out of here. <laughs> get and, out uh, of here. And... <laughs> Why do you guys keep doing this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also wanted to say your nose is looking fantastic. It looks like it's really like I was gonna say. <laughs> I was you. gonna say um bedded in, but I feel like bedded in is not the right word because I feel like uh I remember when we we saw you when you just mm. first had it done. I can I move it maybe... now. Like it's like. You know, like, Ooh. it's not sensitive anymore. It's so extremely it's lifelike. Great. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. Yeah, no, oh, wow, fantastic. yeah. It's got full range of motion. How yeah. are you, are you still feeling really, really happy with it and yeah. everything? Yeah, no, no issues at all. Like, I move on quite quickly. Like, now I've, like, forgotten that I even had it done. Like, that yeah. old, like, that's the past me. Like, I don't even, don't even talk about that anymore, <laughs> you know? I'm, I, can you not dead nose me, please, actually? <laughs> that's really, really, really <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is uh, Gen Toy Porn I am. Do you mind what? if I just plug my new podcast a little bit? Because when you're saying about oh, what sure. I'm yeah, doing, of course. I've, I've started a podcast. I mean, you should still listen to this podcast, but I also have another podcast. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you should immediately stop listening yeah. to this podcast and unsubscribe so you have room in your feed for Jen's podcast. <laughs> So I've uh, started a podcast with my friend P, P Deneen. Um, she is a trans Irish playwright. She's really good. And it's basically oh. just, it's called, um, it's called oh, The wow. Trans Lobby. And basically, it's just called Trans Lobby. And basically, we just watch a sort of like piece of lame trans media, like whether it be like The Crying Game or like, you know, whatever, something that we can make fun of. And then we just make fun of it for an hour. But it's, it's like people mm. seem to like it. So I'd love it if you guys could have listened to that. Thank you very much. That's good. Yeah. When have you started putting out episodes? Yeah, there's two episodes out. We did The Crying Game and we did the TV series Pose. Um, and yeah, we're doing it every week. So yeah, it's cool. just a fun little chat. I'm calling it like, have you heard of like the dirtbag left? That sort of concept, which is like people who are left leaning, but also like pieces of shit. That's kind of what we oh. are. It's <laughs> equivalent. So. <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the what's the name, sorry, of the podcast? It's called Trans Lobby. Like um uh, you know, Trans like, Lobby. Like, okay. Talk, awesome. Yeah. But like the lobby of a cinema, right? It's like it's a clever play on words, you know. It's like <laughs> it's a pretty smart name oh. for a podcast actually. Uh, all right. Yeah, check that out. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. I'd love to I see love that. slash hear that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can see it, but it wouldn't really be the same effect. No, I love uh, podcasts where people make fun of movies, so I'm, I should check that out. Okay, so Jim, what's like? What do you think is the biggest change you've experienced over the last six months? Well, to be honest with you, I think the biggest change is the quitting of my job because I now have like so much spare time to sort of like think about doing things, but not actually do them. <laughs> <laughs> But I, ha but you know, I have. It's, it's just weird. It's just an adjustment. Like I, at the moment, I feel yeah. like I'm like on six weeks summer holiday, but like, it's never ending. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's been nice. It's nice. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. But yeah, that's been quite an adjustment thing. That's about it. I mean, that's not it. There have been other changes. Right. I mean, I got I got a boob job. I don't know. I don't remember if I uh, oh, had done can... that already. No, before. you haven't. No, you hadn't. So. No. No, so I did that. It's not as clear as the nose job, but it, it is something that I did. Mm -hmm. What else did I do? Was that uh, was that a similar was that a similar sort of like heavy duty procedure or because I know you said with the nose job it took it was quite easy not painful or was it like yeah what was it like? So it was like it was an afternoon. <laughs> it's like literally like you go in, <laughs> they do it, and then they kick you out like the same day, um, oh. just, just straight onto the streets in the rain <laughs> and uh... <laughs> still sedated. <You're laughs> yes, just... <laughs> well, pretty, actually. Yes, I mean, like I was still like, like, <laughs> like, like yeah. it is weird. Like that is what happens. Um, but that's not to say that the service wasn't good. Like they gave me a very nice right. suit. Oh, um, that's that's kind. 
<laughs> that, that's a... Yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm. See, it was um, it was broccoli and Stilton soup, but like a nice one, you know, like wow. Uh, I normally like out of a pot, not a can. I yeah, never have experienced yeah. a nice broccoli and Stilton. Is 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 that really? how you pick that doctor? They were like free bowl of <laughs> soup with every boob job. I mean, pretty much. I... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, it was good, and and it was relatively low pain. It just it was just kind of like the first couple of weeks. It's it's like. It just, it just really aches and like really sort of hurts when you lay down. So well, th- well that's good. That sounds. That's uh, congratulations on the. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, that is. I think that is what you say. This, been, yes. Uh... Yeah, it has. It has actually been like I, I bring it up only because it, it, it has actually been a huge change. Like I feel like has it's it? like boosted my confidence by like a million. Uh, I don't know what a metric I'm uh, sort of measuring it by, but a million something. <laughs> so confidence like, points. Yeah, yeah, just like physical confidence. You know, just sort of like lack of dislike and uh, sort of just happiness and stuff. I guess. Oh, well, that's great. On a on oh, a physical well, level. Um, right. Right. Um, but being yeah, being more comfortable in your own skin and whatnot yeah. like that's a big that's that's very big and that's great yeah so, and they are yeah, very big and uh yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> so okay but i didn't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, did you, so I assume you get to pick the size that you want. Up to a point, yeah. yeah. Up to a yeah. point. <laughs> but, but, but what I mean by that is, like, there are limits. Um, right. Like, they're like, this body can't handle anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> we've taken her as far as she can go, Captain. It's like that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, um, but you do exactly. get a choice between, like, two kind of different types, like, different shapes, uh-huh. kind of. Like, oh, like okay. you can have, like, square if you want. <laughs> like, kind of square. You can have, like, um, you can have, like, like teardrop or you have right. like I can't remember what I went for. I said, give me the ones that look most natural. That, well, yeah, okay. So I was going to say, is uh, when you say there were limits, is it like limits in terms of like budget? Like they're like, this is how much boob can I get for this amount of money? Or is it like a physical they, limit? <laughs> I don't know if they charge by the kind of size, but um, it's yeah. more, no, it's more like what your body can actually like handle. Right, right. I think okay. like if you if you really wanted, like if you, like, you know those people that you see who have like super, super, super big, like crazy boob. Like I, yeah. they can't just get those straight away you know they have to like build up to it so like they'll have one oh, okay. and they'll have to get it again again um, you gotta get the back muscles built you up got, yeah you gotta build up to it is there anything that you wish you'd known six months ago that you know now hmm, that's a question uh do you know what not really because and not to get too sort of like existential philosophical of it but i, I don't know I just no i don't... demand you get existential yeah <laughs> i just i just don't believe in that really like i just not to like completely shit on your whole segment but like i just <laughs> don't <laughs> sort of well, that's sounding too hippy dippy ish you know i just think that everything happens at the time that it's supposed to and like i don't i don't really <laughs> like imagine uh right a, 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 a version of events where i am like able to foresee the future you know we've all seen back to okay. the future and stuff we know what happens when you start messing around with that kind of thing and i yeah. have no interest in doing that so i guess it would have been nice to know like if people are gonna die and then you can stop it from happening but i don't know what what will happen if that, i don't know maybe I've, maybe i'm overthinking you mean this. prince philip we were all we were all devastated by prince philip i i'm departure. still in deep mourning actually i <laughs> you know i'm actually kind of triggered that you brought up prince philip i'm sorry i apologize <laughs> I tell you what I wish I'd have known. I tell you what I wish I'd have known earlier on is how good um, Succession is. There you go. I wish I'd have known how good Succession is. I would have watched it a long okay. time ago. Otherwise, I hate uh, that. You know when you watch something late and you've kind of been putting it off because you just think like everyone must just be stupid and lying and no one's got good taste and you watch it and you're like, oh, actually, it's actually pretty <laughs> flipping good and I understand why people are raving about it. I've uh. not seen Succession. What is it? Can you just give a really quick deep? Yeah, so basically it's like an HBO high budget drama thing and it's about like a family but more specifically it's kind of about like this Rupert Murdoch style old man who owns like this huge media corporation uh, based sort of off Fox and you know but it's basically like one to one based off Rupert Murdoch's life but it's all mm. about his like kind of nasty shitty family and like they're all kind of like fighting for um his position and it's got a lot of backstabbing and it's funny it's kind of like the thick of it in a way and it's written huh. by uh, jesse armstrong who wrote like the show and stuff like that it's really good really oh good. amazing oh, interesting. Yeah. great it's, check it out. it's dramatic it's funny it's got loads of horrible shits in it like i don't know what else you <laughs> want really oh i want nice people i want nice stories with nice people <laughs> no you don't no one wants that go watch flipping magic roundabout if that's what you want i want 
on. Oh, a cold hard capitalist shits <laughs> being horrible to each other and <laughs> destroying the world. I just want nice people doing nice yeah. things for each other. Ah, oh, whatever. I watched. This is probably bringing the, the mood down a lot, but the risk of <laughs> doing that. I watched um, sure. Alan versus Farrow, uh, the the sort of the four part documentary series outlining Woody Allen's various crimes. And- oh, oh yeah. yeah. How was that? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like, obviously it's horrible, but it's really good. And it just really made me sort of want to physically fight Woody Allen. <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, recommend on that one if you can handle it. You know, what's but, funny is I would bet cash money that he takes the New York Times. He gets the New York Times delivered. So he probably knows who you are. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh my He's God. like, oh, that Jen girl, we got to get her. <laughs> I'd say no. I'd say no, Woody Allen. I will not be in any of your films. Stop asking me. <laughs> yeah. I'd I've got a, yeah, a higher exactly. moral, a better moral compass than a lot of the actors. Uh, exactly. I'm looking at, looking you, at you, Scarlett Johansson. Oh my god, yeah. that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> we said that at the exact same moment. Yeah. yeah, she keeps doing Woody Allen movies like nothing's wrong, and I'm like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, so I guess Jen. <laughs> Oh, that was weird. Uh, <laughs> great minds, right? So, Jen, what is next for you? Hmm. Uh, hmm. What is next for me? I don't know. I wish I did. Every day is a new adventure. I, I um, right. You got the, moment, the podcast? Yeah, like, you know, like, again... You missed this Tara, but I was I was basically saying that I'm I'm trying I'm trying to be a little bit more hippy dippyish these days and I'm just trying to live in the moment, do you know what I mean? Because that's nice. Yeah, because I've found that if I don't do that I get stressed out, jealous right. and anxiety induced. So now I'm just gonna try to live in the moment. What will come will come to me. I've asked the universe, I've put it in a bottle, I've thrown <laughs> it in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna positively manifest lots of right. nice things. I've got I've got some crystals. Uh, <laughs> no, I have a vision board. That. I've got a vi- I did actually make a vision board, but it was not for things I want. It was just for like clothes that I like. <laughs> yeah, okay. Awesome. So yeah, so I've been buying like Vogue magazines and like cutting them out. I tell t- you another thing that I've been doing a lot. I've I've got really obsessed over the past few months with picture frames. Like I've gone crazy. Like I went in the charity shop and I mm. bought like 15 picture frames like over the past couple of months. And I've got now I've got more picture frames than pictures and I've got like <laughs> one wall in my room at home that's just full of like picture frames. Like you know how they used to like put paintings out in the galleries in the Victorian times where they're just like everywhere all over yeah. the wall like I that's saw that still how film. I decorate my house yeah well that's what <laughs> I do it's really cool so I've got like <laughs> yeah. I've got like I'm just I've got to the point where I've run out of like people that I care about <laughs> now I've just, now I've just got like pictures that I've got Billie Eilish in one of them <laughs> I'm not in, like and I like Billie Eilish but I don't like I wouldn't say I like Billie Eilish that much but it's a good <laughs> <Okay>. picture <laughs> so it's on my wall um, well I'll send you a picture of me and then at least it's somebody you know right send me this Aww. do a screenshot of yeah. this all of us in a row here, <laughs> okay. and I'll frame that uh, alright fine yeah hold on a second uh, everybody smile <laughs> All right. Wait, I do it. Okay. I love Anyways. that we, we picked the time where I'm like literally wearing no makeup and I decided to dermaplane my face earlier. So it's like really red and blotchy. But oh. it's okay right. because your camera's like three megapixels. So it's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, <laughs> okay so uh cool so more writing more gigging you're working on peak trans that's yeah, your new show it is yeah uh, it is oh well um that's that's my show like my hour that i'm doing yeah yeah so yeah i'm doing some previews of that coming up um there's have you done a preview did i see that you did a preview already how did it go yeah it was okay it was it was at brighton but the thing is it was like you know it really was like starting again it, it was like doing like a relatively big big stage like that in, a, in an outdoor space when you mm-hmm. haven't done an hour for a long time I mean it wasn't bad it was just very very loose <laughs> that's, a, mm-hmm. that's a way of covering up that it was kind of bad um, but it, <laughs> but I've got um, I've got more coming up so yeah it'll, it'll be fine I'm excited I'm looking forward to it <laughs> I found like I remember doing Brighton with my show a couple of years ago I just felt horrific like beforehand and then once the first two were over with 
I just felt so much better because it was like, oh, if I can do that, then I can do it. You know, like it's just the first one getting up there I find the hardest. Yeah, and I've done it before. It's just like I did Brighton a few years ago and I've done a couple of other, I've done like Leicester and stuff like that. But this is a new show. Those, those other ones were just like a few minutes. This one's an hour. So it's all new material. Mm. But I have one coming up in Cam- at the Camden Fringe. I've got... I'm doing my own previews of it in Hoxton. So, yeah, hopefully it will get better with time. And also, really tough, like, going up having not done actual stand-up for so long because of the pandemic. That must have been challenging. Yeah, it has been, but I haven't I haven't found it too difficult to get back into it just because I really love stand-up. And, like, I, I'm having more fun now than I was before. I think it's that thing, you know, when you're, like, oh. separate from something for a long time and then mm-hmm. now that I'm back to it I, I feel like honestly like I feel like a lot of people have said this to me about their own experience as well but I feel like obviously there's more negatives when it comes to the lockdown positives and, and the coronavirus but one positive that I've got from it is that just having that time out to think about what I want to do and like what mm-hmm. kind of medium I want to be and stuff like that it's, it's, yeah. it's kind of like reinvigorated me a little bit and it's made more happy on stay weirdly so oh that's yeah. so nice mm, that's good yeah like it all feels fun now it all feels fun again and low 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 stakes you know mm. oh great i think that's oh, the problem right it's like a lot of the time when you're doing stand up you're like there's that thought of like oh like this gig's really important and this one's like you know i need to get higher on the ladder and all this kind of lame stuff and now it's more like mm. i just want to i just want you to like me kind of thing so <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great uh yeah I, that's good yeah I don't, I don't even i still haven't been on stage i don't I, I won't be on stage until august actually i don't have anything scheduled till then we'll see you gotta do it you uh gotta hop back on yeah, hop on the I'm, stage part of me <laughs> it. Part, part of me is expecting to just walk on stage and be like you know what never mind forget it <laughs> no come on Matthew. you're a young starlet you're... <laughs> uh, yeah uh i don't think either of those things but thank you for your vote of confidence look you've got all that like you've got a kid now so yeah that's like that's 20 yeah it's material guys it's gold material. <laughs> you could be like the new louis ck you could be like i hate my fucking kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the only way you want to be like louis yeah CK. no no yeah. Draw the line there. <laughs> and just for the record that is the only way i'm like louis ck <laughs> yeah. um uh... anyways but uh excellent well jen thanks so much again for talking to us if people want to find you online if you want to be found where can they do that or oh, is there anything you want yes, to plug i always want to be found well thanks for having me i had a really nice time it's nice to oh, talk what? to you we're gonna have to do we'll have to do it more often than every six months guys, <laughs> well, <I'm sorry. laughs> but um it yeah so if you want to find me i am on twitter at jen ives comedian i'm on instagram at i'm jen ives i don't really go for the kind of brand synergy thing like i have different Right. Uh, names for everything if you want to follow me on tiktok which i don't ever use i'm jen i've 666 <laughs> um and yeah uh, you, if you just go at any kind of like podcasting thing type trans lobby you'll get my new podcast right. so it's fun if you like and it. look and look for uh jen live somewhere hopefully yeah. near you Camden yeah. French check her out and hoxton cabin at the moment yeah a great comedian a great human being Oh, you don't know that. Like, horrible, Matthew. You don't know that. You've always, just... you've always been very nice to me. I've, I, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. You, I've always thought you were very nice. Thank you. I, Thank you. Uh, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Jen. So <laughs> it's lovely talking uh, to both of you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks right. so much, Jen. Take care. I can't wait to Take see care. you on your show. Oh, yes, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, you get free. You really... get free ticket. But if any of you two want to come and see it, you get free ticket. Oh, thank yeah. you. I'll make the most of that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Listening back to our intro, I yeah. thought it was very. I thought my prediction, I thought, was fairly accurate, as in, like I said, coming up on 70% vaccinated. Yeah. We're now on 85% of adults have had their first vaccine. Mm-hmm. And we, I do think it's working. Like the vaccine seems to be working, right? It does, except for like hospitalizations are up and I don't know. 
I thought we'll they see. said that I thought they said that the actual virus like numbers were increasing, but hospitalizations weren't increasing at nearly the same rate that they had in the past. Yeah, like infections were up. Actually, you remember Andrew Steele, who we talked to several months ago and who we'll talk to in a few months from now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he actually posted a very fascinating graph, which he like he mapped. He chart. He, he it was like a graph. He was trying to figure out where he was charting like hospitalizations versus infections and you can see where the inf- where the vaccine program goes into effect you can see that the gap between the two increases because it was like kind of they were running parallel to each other and then and then the gap increased but still they track each other but it's not as bad but yeah so but like infections are up and hospitalizations are going up but they're not as bad because of the vaccination I but- got a shock when we listened like listening to the intro when when I said that there were 40,000 new cases in a day oh, yeah. definitely made me feel like oh wow we've come a long way since then like it's way way down we have yeah Uh, yeah i think it's it's getting better i i don't know i still i'm worried because also because like everybody got together this weekend to watch england play football and it was just like oh my god this is gonna be like a million little super spreader events so we'll see Mm. i i forgot how angry i was at my parents back in the end of december (laughs) that was that was really interesting i'm sorry for making a joke about that by the way what? No, it's fine. I don't, I don't remember. Just listening back to it, where like, as in, you're saying how upset you are, and I, I made the joke about like, you know, oh, you have to let if them they, grow if up, they, but... no, no, if they died as a result of having COVID, and you'd like warn them not to have COVID, uh, not to sort of have people over, and I was sort of like, God, that's quite a intense thing to say but anyway yeah but yeah i mean yeah i guess i could have just i was like yeah and i could have been i told you so at the funeral uh yeah my whole eulogy (laughs) was like i told them but they're fine they're absolutely fine they're actually on theoretically they're on their way to the uk right now so oh that's so nice are you excited to see them it's been ages right it has been like um, over two years, I think now since I've gotten to see them. Wow! And yeah, so it's been a long time, and they've never met Tavish, and so oh my gosh, really... that's so exciting! So as long as everything goes okay with their flights and their testing and stuff, they should be here tomorrow. So that's that's very exciting. So wow, that is amazing! Did it... and they didn't end up getting COVID, did they? From uh, from nope. the family members? No, they didn't. But that still doesn't mean that i wasn't right but anyways <laughs> <laughs> i just it really you know a, a part of me was like it really pissed me off that they didn't get covid but at the same time i was like very <laughs> like well it doesn't prove this doesn't mean i wasn't right you know <laughs> just because you didn't because you lucked out but anyways so it's it's a hard it's a hard <laughs> thing it's i don't know yeah it was weird to, to remember how angry i was at them and because i'd completely forgotten it after you know because now they're vaccinated and everything and whatever <laughs> it's amazing what a difference six months makes but uh yeah i think your prediction was was pretty spot on my prediction was not as spot on i haven't oh. seen anybody wearing tails do but... you know what i actually looked up tails like because i was like i wonder if anyone has been wearing tails and loads of people obviously it's more likely to wear tails but lots of people were wearing tails to the ascot uh, racing thing three weeks ago oh wow Mm. including simon cowell and some other people and i was just like you know i guess like two events like that they are still pretty trendy if not coming back so in some ways you were right well i feel like if anything that the fact that, that it's like the fancy horse races is the only place that has tails means that it's not i wanted tails to kind of become like i wanted i wanted tails for the working man is basically what i'm saying i wanted like every man and every woman and everybody in between i wanted them to have tails and just everybody be a little bit fancier out there but i'm not leading by example here i'm i'm i wore a t-shirt all weekend and i've been, I've been out in my pajamas multiple times <laughs> recently uh walking a baby around so i i don't have any room to talk i don't know <laughs> What would be really funny is if you did wear tails, like pushing your baby around and you're like, hello, yes. madam. <laughs> I put on my tuxedo to push my baby around. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, it was funny. We were we went bowling this weekend and in the lane next to us was like uh, a couple teenagers like on a date. And I said to Alice, I was like, look at this. This lady is dressed up so nicely and has makeup on and looks great. And this dude's in sweatpants. And I was like, that poor girl. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> how people look at us because like that lady looks so nice and stylish and that dick look is just wearing a jeans and a t-shirt everywhere he goes he looks terrible and his hair needs to be cut and everything and she's like yeah that's pretty much it i was like oh 
now I see. <laughs> Anyways, it turns out we were just looking into a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> a much younger and sexy mirror. Uh, uh, I don't know. But, I mean, he's wearing sweatpants. I, uh, you know what? Even at my lowest fashion points, I've never gone out in sweatpants i just i feel like it's anyways whatever i think i literally i love sweatpants and i wear really? them a lot i think they're yeah. just so comfortable so yeah i'm awful i'm all for wearing them personally but um, oh, okay <laughs> they were saying <laughs> i'm awful <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no i i love them okay so anyways. oh I, are you gonna get your hair cut at some stage or <laughs> wait what is this about <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna get my haircut. I meant to get my haircut last week, and then I didn't. And I, I'm afraid to get it cut because I'm afraid that it's like thinned out so much on top that I'll just be bald when it's cut. So you got plenty yeah. of hair still up there. Nah, it's weird and wispy. It's it's most of a comb over. It feels like at this point. I'm really worried about it. So hey, we'll you see. can just get plugs. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got money for is hair plugs. <laughs> <laughs> I no, if anything, I'm getting a really bad toupee that is that I'm gonna get a toupee that's so bad it defies people to to like. <laughs> to say something about it like like just to throw it in people's faces like yeah we all know it's toupee we don't care anyways i don't know do you have anything else <laughs> to, i don't i don't think so i'm looking back no i've got the note about you your parents having family over which was really funny oh yeah so you, you were talking about missing australia and now you're finally getting to fulfill your dream now over a year later or no it'll be like a year and a half later How long yeah it be? it'll be almost it'll be once we get over there it'll be two years since i've been been out there yeah and it feels very surreal still i'm really like yeah crossing my fingers that we do get out there because it was one of those things where now they're tightening the borders again even though australia is even closed at the moment they're making it harder for some reason i think because the vaccine uh, rollout's been so slow in oh, really? australia they're like yeah letting less people in now and i'm like well our flights are booked so hopefully they can't <laughs> cancel them or anyway we'll just see i really 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 want to get back i'm just yeah i'm a bit over i think it was that thing where like when we got to center parks and we're like there for our summer vacation and it was pouring with rain while we're like in the standing in the in the park with the kids in our raincoats and i was just yeah. like i'm so over this <laughs> this country <laughs> Okay, this place um, is done now. <laughs> yeah, and in the whole, you know, like, I don't know, we've just had no bloody sunshine, have we? In fact, I did a video about it the other day called Summer is Cancelled. I haven't done many <laughs> little videos recently, but no. I did that on uh, Instagram and it's had a few hundred thousand views. And I'm just like, it's just because that's relatable, you know, like people just yeah. feel the same it's just a classic thing. Like, I think the weather is just one of those things where, like, people just are like, yes, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a weird summer. It's been a, a horrendous summer, and I don't know how this summer can even call itself a summer. It should be ashamed of itself. Yeah, but thankfully in six months it won't be summer anymore, so you don't even have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can be like, oh, yay, it's cold, just like yay. it should be. And it's been cold the whole time. <laughs> but thanks, everybody, for listening. Please, if you wouldn't mind reviewing and rating the podcast on iTunes or wherever you can do that. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you could tell a friend, that would also be amazing. Uh, tell somebody who, you know, maybe just tell like somebody in, behind you in line at the grocery store. Just, you know, make a new friend by <laughs> talking about podcasts. Be like, what podcast are you into? And then before they even answer, just tell them about this one. And <laughs> that's how we're going to get the word out there. But if you want to follow us, you can follow us on six months later pod on all the stuff and if you want to send us a message you can do it at six months later pod at gmail.com and if people want to find tara online where can you be found tara i've actually recently changed my name to tara dot the dot ham <laughs> wait was on... tara the ham all one word taken already no it was free <laughs> but it was just it just looked like tara the ham <laughs> Tara, Tara the ham. Tara ham. And I thought Tara the ham with the dots in between just was easier. Anyway, that's what it is currently. Who knows if it will say that, but that's on, you know, Instagram and, and TikTok. Check it out. Check check the, you know, whatever. I don't know. That, that, yeah, follow me if you want to uh, or don't. It's it's fine either way. And uh, Matt, <laughs> where where can uh, where can people find you? I'm M. Shadorn on Instagram and uh, reluctantly on Twitter. Tip- Twitter, not really doing anything over there. But if you want to, I make other media, not just on social media. I have, a, in fact, the latest episode of Saint Misbehaving came out, and it was a Fourth of July special about Saint Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows, who has a special American 
theme to his sainthood so um check it out it's very fun and silly so but uh thanks everybody for listening and uh we'll see you again next week in six months thank you very much have a good time bye bye (laughs) bye (laughs) (laughs) okay Do you have a punchline for your joke? So we'll start with that and then we'll move on to what you've been up to. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I've got a pu- yeah, I've got a punchline. I've got to be confident with it, haven't I? Yes, I've got a punchline 100%. It, it's, yeah. it's taken me how long on it ago? For 6 months. Yeah, yeah, 6 months it's taken me to come up with this. <laughs> so what was the lead in line again? <laughs> <What was it? laughs>